Hey everyone, let's talk a little bit about automating our tasks as developers by using the new GitHub MCP server. So you may have seen it around or maybe not, but I've been playing around with it and I'm actually pretty impressed. There are some things that I can do now with my AI agent, which is much easier than how I did it before and manually clicking in the UI myself. Now an AI agent can do certain things on behalf of me and this can actually simplify some parts of your daily workflow. I will show you how to set it up but before we get there let's actually just quickly see what we can do some of the things that we can do here. So I have installed the MCP server I've set it up and I will show you that as well but let me first show you what I can do now. So I will need some kind of AI agent that can do things on behalf of me. So you need some kind of application that also supports MCP. So I've been using uh, GitHub Copilot actually, but there are other ones as well. And Tropic has one. Now here in GitHub Copilot, I picked the agent mode. So actually here with GitHub Copilot, I can click on here and I can see the MCP servers that my agent can reach out to. If I scroll down a little bit, we have the, we actually have one that I showed you in another video. This is the MCP server that I created myself. Check out that other video if you want to see how to create an MCP server in your Next.js application. But this is the one that I installed from GitHub. Now an MCP server will contribute certain tools. These are the tools that the agent can invoke. So for example, if I tell the agent to create a new issue, it may decide to invoke this tool, which is exactly this, when I open a new issue. And it can do other things as well, like open a new pull request, create a new repo, and it may actually do multiple in the same request. Actually, it's pretty common. You can also get details about your commit, details about the issues, the comments. Also, it can decide to get more information about you, right? So if you say something like, get all the issues assigned to me, so it needs to know perhaps a little bit about who you are. There's actually a dedicated tool for that, get me. There are many other tools here. Well, I believe there are more than 50 actually. So it's pretty comprehensive and it actually seems to work really well. These are the tools that my agent can invoke on behalf of me. So I could say something like, could you list the open GitHub issues? And I can even say by priority, let's say. So I wanna see the open GitHub issues. I'm starting my day. I wanna know what I need to work on. And it's an agent mode here and I'm using the Claude Sonnet 4 model. It's considered a very good model as of recording. And let's just see what happens. I'm gonna press enter here and let's see what that's gonna do. So here you can see it starts to type and here you can see it's invoking a tool. So this is how it shows in the uh, Copilot interface here. And it has actually invoked another tool here. So now it has called the two tools and another one third one. Okay, so it actually may invoke uh, these tools multiple times. And you can see now it's actually a different tool. This was list issues. And this is the tool get get issue detail. Well, it had about six different tool invocations here. And ultimately, now it can come up with a result. It has automatically ranked these in terms of priority. So high priority, we have some issues here for the for my React and Next.js course. Make sure you check it out as well, by the way. Amazing course, these are not big issues, no worries. Um, we have some other issues here as well. And then we have medium priority. So these are some smaller issues and low priority as well. So pretty nice summary by a repository. That's also very nice and with some recommendations, but it was able to generate this response because it was able to retrieve this information from my GitHub account, right? So if we scroll up a little bit to see what it exactly did. So it actually invoked this list notifications tool and you can give that tool an input. So it actually just gave this one and it, what, it, what it got back from that GitHub MCP server was this output, right? So then my agent could use that output to continue finishing the request here. So it was basically just checking my notifications and from the notification it's going to get the open issue. So it says I can see several repositories with issues. So let me check the issues for each repo systematically. It ran list issues. It passed this as the input. So basically it's going to ask for a specific repository to give the specific issues in the open state. So the LLM came up with this as the input, right? So an LLM, the agents, the Cloud Sonnet 4 in this case, decided that it that this needs to be the input to call the tool. And what it got back from the GitHub MCP server is this, which is going to be a list of open issues for this repo, right? So then it's called the same tool, but now with different inputs. So now also for the other courses, right? So now uh, you can see it had some other repos as well to also get the issues. And then it had a different tool to get issue details. So of a particular issue, you can also get the particular details. For this repo, give me the details about issue with number 14. And so then the LLM got back this response from the GitHub MCP server, right? So then ultimately it has retrieved all the information and it can synthesize this output here. That's basically how it works in a nutshell. There are many other things we can do. For example, I can say uh, summarize changes in the to-do app repo, 
right? Maybe I want to see the changes that were made in that repo. And I can use one of these other models as well, right? So if I try GPT 4.1, what they're basically doing is tool calling. So they need to be able to identify when to call a tool with which uh, inputs and how to deal with the output. Uh, but let's try it out with GPT 4.1. So summarize changes in the to do app repo. You can see it has already invoked the tool here and it basically ran the list commits tool. So basically it's going to re retrieve a list of commits for this particular repo. I got back a list of commits and I get a nice output here that shows me the changes that were made to the repo. Okay, really nice. I can also try to do something like, can you close all issues older than 30 days in the to-do app repo? So this is more like a write action. Previously, we were doing some reading of data. So first it's gonna get the uh, issues and now it, it will try to edit an issue. Okay, so now it will actually ask me, well, it depends on the application you're using, but here in GitHub Copilot, it will ask me for permission. So I do have to confirm that I want to allow edit issue. And then it wants to do it for another issue as well. I will allow this. And you can see now it has uh, closed these issues, right? So it can also do these sort of write operations as well. I don't have to manually approve each tool usage. I can also allow them to automatically be approved. But I'm still a little bit careful with this because yeah, all of this is very new. I, I don't want to have something destructive without my permission right now. But I think over time, a lot of these things can be done automatically. So if you want to know what you can do, I would say just look at the tools that the agents can invoke and will give you some pretty good ideas. So one other thing could be, for example, can you create a new repo called GitHub MCP and commit the first commit or read me hello world. Right, just something silly here just to try it out. Let me actually just see, let's actually see what happens and if this is possible. All right, so now it wants to run a tool called create repository. Yeah, so here, for example, I can actually also allow in this session, allow in this workspace or always allow. Let's actually just allow it in this section so I don't have to confirm every little thing. Now here, this is a different tool. So this is creating a file. So I will also allow that, okay. Okay, so actually it will give me the URL here. If we check that out, I have a new repo here on GitHub created by an AI agent on my behalf. And I think this is where it's going. I think you as a user or developer, you will be sitting inside your agent environment telling the agent what you want to do and the agent will do things on your behalf now if you want to see some other things you can do here i would say check out the tools here it will give you some good ideas so maybe you're noticing something that fits well inside of your own workflow but i think this is pretty cool and yeah it's actually really promising and exciting to see where this goes now i'm going to show you something really cool so make sure you watch the entire video but before i continue i quickly want to show you something else that's also really cool we live in the age of ai everything is changing including ordering pizza so how about we order some pizza here and yes i could do it manually here and pick all the toppings and the size manually check out here fill out my information here and finally place an order i could do all of this manually but it's a lot of work since i'm already automating my work with my ai agent how about i also automate ordering pizza with my with an ai agent so i can use stagehand for this by browser base they are also today's sponsor so i can start the script and it's going to order the pizza for me so it will actually open up a chrome instance which i'm not controlling so this is all uh, done for me by the stagehand script so you can see it has actually selected the pepperoni topping it has clicked on to go to the checkout button and i will scroll down here manually myself just to see what it will do so let's see it will it will fill out the information now, i'm not typing this myself it's automatic it's autonomously doing it is autonomously doing this for me and it has clicked on place order and now my pizza is ordered it's confirmed and I didn't even have to do it. It will automatically close out of here as well. So what you just saw was possible thanks to Stagehand actually. Stagehand, if you've ever done something with Playwright or Puppeteer, it basically powers that with some AI features. So the script that was responsible for this will just go to that website. In this case, it was a local app, but can be a public website as well. You still have to go to like you're used to from Playwright. But then we have some other methods, some other things we can do on this page, like observe and act. And these allow us to describe in natural language what we want to do so in this case just observe wait until that pizza initial page is loaded we want to act something basically do something select the medium size previously if you wanted to do something like this you had to look up the css selector and sort of fiddle around with the html structure but now you can just specify it in natural language and then the llm will look up the medium size regardless of the html structures then i also want to add pepperoni topping 
these are my favorite settings so this is just what i can hard code but you can also imagine that a script pops up a modal for me maybe asks me what i want to eat today and then it can also click on the button like we saw check to see if the checkout page is loaded so we have act and observe we also have extract on the order page so before we have actually confirmed it we just quickly want to check if the price for example is above a threshold so we would we do want to get some actual data here so we can build in some uh, safeguards essentially so we can also just ask it to extract some data in json format we can specify a schema here with zod and it will give us the items and the subtotal that are that is currently in the cart so before we've confirmed we are going to check if the pizza is too expensive right? i don't want to spend more than 25 dollars for sure for a pizza right so if that is the case i'm going to close out of here and exit the process so this is just to built in some uh, safeguard essentially other than that we will continue right so then on that other page with the form we can fill out the information here and ultimately of course we want to click on the place order button we're going to check if the confirmation page is visible and also extract the final order information so that we will also log that here but it can also take a screenshot in this case i'm just putting the confirmation image here in my file system here you can see it was ordered and i can quickly see that everything went all right and so you can see how powerful this is to also automate certain workflows it makes controlling a browser much easier and i would say even a lot of fun so it's a project by browser base we can run that script locally on our own computer but we can also run it here with browser base and if you've ever tried to deploy something like a puppeteer or playwright that's a lot of work it's a lot of hassle so i'm actually really excited to see browser base stepping into this space so i would say check them out you can find a link in the description and now let's actually continue automating our work with the github mcp all right now how do you actually set this up if we scroll down a little bit you will see in the readme here that there is a guide you can follow now it seems you can do it in multiple ways the way that I got it to run was to actually use Docker. So you do need to have uh, Docker installed. If you're not familiar with Docker, I don't think that's a big problem because you don't need to do much here, but you do need the Docker desktop, for example. So I installed that and it will give you an application that will look something like this. Okay, so if you have that, once Docker is installed, you will also need to ensure Docker is running, right? So this application needs to be uh, running. So you, on my Mac here, it's in my toolbar here. I, I can see it's running here. So with Docker, you have so-called images. So that's what we need to download. That will be the actual MCP server. Okay, so now we need to download that image. If you scroll up a little bit, you will see under packages here for this repo, the MCP server image that we need to download. We see the uh, versions of the image that we can download. I tried doing the latest one, but I wasn't able to make it work. So I'm just going to use the one that was tagged with actually latest. So if I scroll down a little bit here, you will see that here there is one that is actually tagged with latest. That also seems to be the popular one. So you need to open up a terminal. I'm using the terminal app here, but should work with Windows PowerShell or command prompt as well. I can also go inside my code editor here and open up the terminal here. It's the same. So this image is sitting on the GitHub container registry as it's called. So we need to log into there so we can actually pull that image onto our computer. So I can do something like Docker login GitHub container registry.io. And I was already logged in, but in case you're not logged in, it will first ask you for the username. So in my case, that's just my GitHub account username. So it will be a byte grad. And then it will ask you for a password. So this can be a personal access token here on GitHub. So if you go to your GitHub accounts uh, settings and then scroll down to developer settings and then here on the left side you have personal access tokens now i was able to make it work with tokens classic and here i can create a personal access token so basically i can so i or a tool on my behalf can programmatically interact with my account so you want to be very careful with this don't show it to anyone else unless you know what you're doing so you can generate a new token here I've, i was able to make it work with the classic option here and you can give it a name I used the shortest expiration date and the scopes. So, so think about what you want to allow to happen on your account. Probably you want to be a little bit careful with write operations, especially delete operations, right? So I would probably be inclined to only approve read operations. So maybe you just want to allow read operations just to try it out. So you can uh, check the scopes and then you can generate the token. Okay, so it will give you a token. That's what you need to pass as the password to log in you will also need it later in a second for the mcp server actually once you're able to log in now we can actually pull that image onto our computer right so now we can run docker pull so actually we can copy this but i will right so now i can paste this here now we're not going to pull this one 
So I can remove this one with this. Uh, I was able to make it work with just latest here. So I'll press enter here. And it, if it's the first time it's going to download, it may take a sec, a couple seconds. But for me, it was already downloaded. So uh, it's not going to do that again. So once you have that in your Docker desktop, you will see you will see some image here. So that's for the Docker setup. Now you need to make it work with your AI agent. So I was using Visual Studio Code and that and they have a button here. So if you click on that, it will open this up in Visual Studio Code. We get some options here. I can click on install server. So if you do that, it will set things up in your settings.json for you. And it will also prompt you for the personal access token. So you can give the same token again. And here you can see it's um, blurred out. So it's not, oh, you want to be very careful with that. Don't show it to anyone else. Right, so once you have that, at least in Visual Studio Code, uh, you can try to open up this, uh, you can set it in agent mode and then you can open up this tools menu here and you should be able to see this MCP server in this list and it will show you the tools that are associated with it. When you see that, it should be installed properly. So then you can try something like uh, give me all open GitHub issues and then the model should identify that it's able to call a tool for that and uh, use those tools. Right, so that's how it's supposed to work. So really cool to see this MCP server standard developing. I'm really excited to see where it goes. Hope that this is helpful for you as well. I want to thank Browserbase for sponsoring the video. Check them out as well. You can find a link in the description. And I want to thank you for watching. Hope to see you in the next one.